All right. Welcome, everybody. According to, uh, well, market clock time, it's exactly 4.30. So uh, welcome. I just want to do um, a quick introduction. Uh, first off, today's uh, presentation is in regards to the person's indicator that could be found on, uh, and I'm proud to, to say, HGSI software. Um, I know some of you may um, know that George Roberts, we do have a uh, local celebrity in the house. We have two people with HGSI, Matthew Sorrells, and again, uh, so welcome, Matthew, and George Roberts of HGSI. We've got the big man himself in-house, so uh, welcome, everybody. Uh, we also have a few um, regular cast of uh, character uh, clients and uh, repeat offenders and friends. I wanted to welcome Lars from, I don't know why you're up so late, Lars, but welcome. I think, Lars, you're out in, um, across the river, over the stream, past grandmother's house we go over in Sweden. So welcome, uh, Lars. I'm glad to see you're, you're with us. Uh, Eddie L., Ed, uh, always a pleasure to have you on board with us. And again, we have a lot of new friends and, and folks here, so everyone feel welcome. We might have a lot of folks that are uh, um, using person's uh, indicators, and then there might be just uh, friends and users of HGSI. The purpose of today's webinar is just to get together and again, have a, uh, a discussion and an introduction on what the person's indicators does. What, what does it bring to the table? And in this environment, uh, what, what's helping traders in, in uh, make better stock selecting and, and stock picking probabilities. So that's number one. And uh, for, for purposes of disclosure, let's uh, get right into a disclosure. So if you could take just a moment to read that, and I'm sure everyone is aware that trading does involve risk of loss. And I would appreciate if everyone could take a quick glance at this uh, disclosure and uh, we'll, uh, we'll carry forward. Who are we and what do I do? Well, um, I am a seasoned veteran, not that I wanna give out, um, of course, this book, that you see up here called uh, Candlestick and Pivot Point Trading Triggers was uh, published by John Wiley and Son back in 2000. It was written in like five, I think, and, and published in, it's gray, it's a gray matter. I think it was 2006, uh, early 06, I think it was. Basically what this book went through was uh, how, to, how I use Candlestick and Pivot Point Trading Triggers and a few other indicators, many of which uh, we have developed into trading strategies and systems that we use to this minute, um, even as far as in our uh, trade room that uh, we use today. The book on the left in the green cover was Mastering the Stock Market. And um, a lot of the tools that that I had created, uh, and, and we'll go through some of them, which I think some of the basic tools like Relative Strength Index um, and uh, a component of uh, re relative strength, uh, comparative relative strength. And that's something I've always been big on as a trader. Um, and for some of you, I'm not gonna give you the history lesson of John Person, but I will say that I started as a runner on the floor of the Chicago uh, Mercantile Exchange back in 1977. Uh, long and short of it is in 1980 through 1982, I had the pleasure of working with directly uh, under the tutelage of George Lane, the, the man who, uh, was credited for creating the stochastics indicator. So I worked literally 18 inches shoulder to shoulder with George um, and, and did his uh, nightly numbers, uh, ran through back in those days, uh, quite, quite a number of years ago. Um, George, uh, it, was, um, it was interesting to watch how to trade off of, I guess you wanna say in those days, even computer trading and technical technically trading. So I learned about stochastics, I learned about um, open close relationships. I learned about uh, breakout strategies. And back in those days, uh, the big trade was uh, grains, again, uh, was cattle. Uh, I started uh, even before uh, the bond market, gold interest rates were the big thing. It was way before even the S&P 500 was created as a, a stock index uh, futures instrument. Uh, I later went on to um, work at the Chicago Board of Trade where I discovered this uh, uh, new kind of derivative product called options. And uh, through first options, the clearing firm, uh, we took, a, 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 everyone took a significant education in understanding options. And uh, I applied it into the financial markets, specifically the bonds and did uh, tremendously well 
in in uh, a, a, an era of 1986 where interest rates were falling. Some of you may not know this, but we were uh, many many people were uh, in the interest rate environment. We were sitting with 30-year fixed mortgages at 12 and 14 percent. And I think the 30 year fixed, I'm not quite sure exactly where it sits this second, but somewhere around what 3.9% on a 30 year fix. So we have quite a difference in, in um, uh, of uh, interest rates, but uh, that all could change uh, this year as we move forward, right? So my, my uh, indicators and what I did in, in understanding markets and, and things that what made sense, logically made sense, uh, was what I helped to create and put into this book called Mastering the Stock Market. For, and, and what's really uh, fortunate is that I was introduced to HGSI software and I, I found that the, um, the power behind HGSI software in their scanning capabilities and, and almost like drop and plug, drop and play different other indicators. And so I'm going to go through a couple things that I like and, and, and just to, as a, a background, what, what does John Person and, and Persons Planet do? First, we're a financial research and advisory service company. Um, of course, we have a lot of different trading strategies, proprietary indicators, and we're going to go through those today with you on HGSI. We have uh, trading courses from beginner to advanced algo strategists. I do a weekly newsletter. A lot of the trades and, and uh, setups that I use in my weekly advisory service, I get directly from scanning using, believe it or not, drum roll please, HGSI and going through, and I'm going to share that with you right now today. We have two live trading rooms, one's for stock and options, uh, more like swing trading or even day trading, and the other one's a live algo trading where we use these indicators that we created to help develop an algo strategies on uh, various models and uh, including the SPY, uh, SPXL, a leveraged ETF on the SPY, the E-mini S&P futures, and um, many of you guys are, are a part of that as well. Um, and then also I manage a, a small uh, fund, so I'm actively trading in the market, uh, generally on a daily basis and, and managing our uh, positions. So I do have my hands full, and it, the funny part is that uh, everything that um, what we're using a lot of it can be found right here, and this is what I call my 12-step, uh, not to rip off the uh, program of uh, a 12-step program, but it, it's interesting that we do have 12 steps of, of things that we trade. So first and foremost, if you see what's highlighted in lime green, these are the things that we use on HGSI. First off, the PPS indicator, which paints a picture on, on the chart, whether something's a, a buy or a sell. Uh, next, we have candle patterns, which was something that I wrote in that uh, book called Candlestick and Pivot Point Trading Triggers. In that book, we talked about a trading system using a doji pattern, which uh, is a, a, one of the most fantastic, simple strategies uh, available, which told us when to enter a trade, where to put the risk, what the holding period is, and what the expected rate of return could be in a prescribed period of time. The four elements that you'd want to be a trader, to define your risk, to define your profit target, to know where do you get into the trade, and then what's the first premier profit target. So the high closed OG, low closed OG strategy um, also made it easy to not just trade, but with HGSI and other software, easy to scan and look for these setups. And that's what we'll cover today in HGSI's platform. Also, again, what popularized my, I guess the last name was Persons Pivot. Persons Pivot's based off a, a typical formula of floor traders pivots. And I always found that the typical price, which is defined by, or the pivot point defined by the average of the high, the low, and the close. You take the high, you add the low, you add the close, divide by three, and you get what's called the typical price, the pivot point. There's a moving average component similar to a short term, I guess you want to say it, versus a long term moving average. If the short term is above the long term, the market's deemed to be bullish. And in a bullish environment, the person's pivots targets a higher high and a higher low. Now, I want to make sure that everyone understands this is a very powerful point for trading. It's not just that the market will stop dead on a resistance but it's the power of the person's pivots that help us to understand whether the market is bullish or bearish. And that way we could develop 
A, a couple of items, what our risk is and be more directional in our trading. And so for options trader, that's very powerful if you have an idea that if the market's supposed to be bullish, it should move greater than the prior week's high and low. If the market is truly bullish, it should also go and be above its projected pivot point which is that typical price that I just said, and we'll cover that. So don't think that I'm just rattling things off. I just want to make sure everyone, we, we know what these bullet points are that I'm covering and how they apply to HGSI software. So the person's pivots helps us to number one, define the trend direction, and it helps us to determine the support and resistance and under most timeframes. And DWMQ does not stand for, well, it stands for daily, weekly, monthly, and most importantly, a quarterly outlook. And that's important because the quarter is not just any three month period, it's the financial quarter, which would include January, February, March. That's the first quarter, one in which we're in currently. At the end of the quarter, so at the end of March, you will take the high, the low, the close for the entire three month period. And we will get a target area of what the projected uh, market condition direction might be and support resistance for the next quarter. So it's a, the person's pivot is not a, what I call, uh, it, it, it's not a lagging indicator. It's a leading indicator because it's using past price action to help dictate the condition of the market and direction going forward in the future. So it's a futuristic price projected pattern. And it can go out, like I said, end of day for tomorrow, uh, weekly for the next week, monthly for the monthly, and again, in this case, quarterly. We also help develop the concept since options and markets pin or migrate at, at option expirations rather than the end of the month. Since options expire at the third Friday of each month on a monthly expiration, we also develop the option expiration pivots, which I find to be uh, a little bit more accurate than monthly, for most major stocks or stocks that are uh, heavily traded or optionably traded. So something like a Tesla, a NVIDIA, something of that nature that there's heavy option activity, usually the option expiration pivots work tremendously uh, well or better than the end of month because of that expiration expiring factor on, on the um, third Fridays concepts. We use chart patterns such as wedges, channels, head and shoulders. I think everyone should probably have an idea of trend and uh, what consolidation patterns mean. I also, since working with George Lane back in the 80s, understand about seasonal analysis and cyclical analysis cycles. So there are uh, one of the books that George and some of you um, uh, folks out there with a lot more experience than a beginner may know this one term. George had me read a book about cycles that included, um, and again, keep in mind, I was around 20 years old when I started to work with George Lane, that is, um, and had me read about the Kondratiev wave cycle. So, um, I mean, that was fun reading for me for a 20 year old, right? That's, uh, you know, I was thoroughly in, in immense, in, in, immersed in, into the, the field of technical analysis. If you're a commodity trader and you start off at the Chicago Merck of the Board of Trade, you better understand that the, there is seasonal um, cycles within grains and livestock. So there's certain times of the year that, you know, there's a, a supply crunch and certain things that can affect supply and demand function. So seasonal analysis has been a huge part of my background. Um, volume analysis, I always found and I was always taught, and especially in the futures industry, that you had volume and another tool called open interest. And those two components are very important, even with equity traders and options and, and equity traders. So I was, and I still believe to this day that volume is the lifeblood of the market. There is a man, and I, I like to give credit where there's credit due as a part of my past. A man, um, we lost, um, uh, well, we lost, <laughs> um, on balance volume was one of the tools uh, that was uh, a, a, an indicator that I believed in and have used for probably a little more than 30 years, at least 30 years by now. And um, one of the tools, there's several people that I think have been instrumental in the field of technical analysis. 
One is, uh, uh, again, a different gentleman by the name of Wells Wilder, who came up with the concept of average true range. And that's kind of a measurement of how we take volatility. But um, volume analysis and several other indicators, which I didn't put in ATR, is very important. I use this histogram component, which is on a trade station platform, so we won't discuss that today. But the one that I think for all traders that are using stocks right now, relative strength analysis. And I, I brought up Wells Wilder's name because he has an indicator called relative RSI, the relative strength index. And that is a price-based indicator. What I'm referring to is the relative strength analysis. It's comparative relative strength analysis, comparing the performance of one product to another. So I guess you could call it pairs trading. Uh, people would buy Coke, sell Pepsi as a spread trade, buy corn, sell wheat. But we can also compare the strengths or weaknesses of a stock or a sector to the benchmark S&P 500. And that's what we created a momentum indicator called PMC. It's a very powerful tool. It's one in which I think that all traders, if you're using some form of comparative relative strength, this is what you will find uh, to be an exciting, at least a very uh, a good filtering mechanism. And I'll share with you exactly how I use this on HGSI. For commodities, commitment of traders report, breadth analysis, the advanced decline for stock indices. It's another exclusive tool that we use. Um, and then my last conditional change pattern, we use that for trailing stops, entries, and breakouts. And then finally, which we obviously wouldn't have time to get into today, money management and position sizing guidelines. And it's a, an old joke, or it wasn't really a joke, but it's kind of a true story. But what we would talk about back in the old days on the floor is that whenever you were right, you were always in one. Whenever you were wrong, you were always in 100. You know, So your position sizing, if you can relate to that, it's like whenever you're wrong, you're in too many positions. Whenever you're right, you're not in enough. So position sizing and money management guidelines, rather than uh, I think is another component, it's a whole different field that uh, traders really need to participate and, and understand and utilize in their trading approach. So Anyway, this is my John Person teaching program and technical indicators and the outlook. And what we're going to do is kind of um, share with you these, the ones that are highlighted in the lime green. So we're covering one, two, three, four, five of the 12 in today's presentation. So one of the things that I, I wanted to make mention is Joe Granville uh, was the gentleman who created this tool called On Balance Volume. And I did not invent on balance volume but i use it and what we did is we added a moving average on on balance volume now i want to tell everybody no indicator a technical indicator is not going to work all by itself and no strategy works every time and all the time you should always look at maybe altering your option strategies you should uh, also there's times to be in the market there's times not to be in the market and there's uh, different periods of volatility. One measurement of volatility is to look at the average true range, the ATR. I think that the one thing that's constant in this market is volatility. That's the one thing that changes. And so with that said, is one tool the tool that we use each and every and all the time? I mean, after all, there's several things that I use, and I don't think the answer is one tool. And you're not going to be right all the time. But if we can use and, and logically integrate a few non-correlated indicators and put them together logically, I think we can give ourselves a much better edge in the market. So I wanted to bring to your attention, this is HGSI. And what I really got to tell you I love about this, this platform was A, not just the database, but uh, of stocks that they have, the universe of what they use, but also how they break it down to both the industry and the sector, and also some other functions that I think are, are pretty unusual, especially in this day and age that a lot of other software companies didn't do. So even the ones that, and I guess there are a lot of trading platforms out there and a lot of brokerage firms that have lots of indicators. I'm going to use uh, a name that many of you are familiar with, I'm sure, but um, Thinkorswim, for example. I think they're up to somewhere around 683 indicators. 
let me repeat that number. I think they had 600. It might be more now, but um, they were around 683 indicators. Now you think about this for a second. We have the open, the high, the low, the close. We have volume, we have open interest. There's six metrics that we can use, data points that we can use. And there's something about, out of those functions, 683 indicators. Now there's price, most of them are price-based indicators, people, price-based indicators. So uh, I, I think what we need to look at is one of the things that, um, if the masses, if the general masses are all looking at a stochastics or a MACD, and, and that's great, or Wells Wilder RSI, which is an overbought, oversold condition uh, indicator. Again, you've got Bollinger Bands. I mean, the list goes on and on. But I always like to refer to not just the, what's the price look like and what does the price chart look like. And again, we have candlesticks, which, as you can see here, uh, you've got what would you would see as a almost Christmas tree color, red and green. Basically, what it signifies is just a candlestick. If it's red, is the market closes below where the market opened. And if it's green, it shows the market closed greater than the open. It doesn't have any reference to a past price, just its current open, close, high, low relationship, which I find illuminating. And that's why I wrote a book called Candlestick and Pivot Point Trading Triggers way back 17 years ago. Fast forward in 2012, I did come out with that book, Mastering the Stock Market, where I introduced this concept that I was using a proprietary indicator called the Persons Market Catcher, the PMC indicator. I'm going to cover this first, and I just want to explain what's on this chart, though. Down below is on balance volume. It's a volume trend tool. And if you do believe that uh, volume, like I do, is the lifeblood of the market, looking not at the actual volume of one day to the next but the overall volume trend of the market and for me i find that when volume is starting to increase and you're starting to see a a rise in participation of the market kind of gives you an idea that now you have more participation and and more importantly you have stronger you should see a, a, a more participation which would give us better performance in the market value, performance in the market value. So let's talk about this one tool, person's market catcher. And on our website, you can read more details about it. But what it does is it's color coded first and foremost. And there's four colors, obviously. Bright blue or the light blue color starts to show that the market is relative to the S&P 500 is outperforming in terms of percentage. Now in, in stock trading, money follows money. And there's a couple little things that I think that if you currently have this program and you have these indicators, I just wanna give you a quick lesson of the condition of pricing. So the one powerful tool about, or a, a component about this tool of person's market catcher is the fact that when markets tend to rise and you see breakouts, and that was a big function of the market over the last two years under the pandemic, markets were making just silly, ridiculous breakout moves. Um, when I say silly, I think I don't need to define that. We could take a look at a few examples like Sam Adams going to $1,400 or Wayfair, or I think the most classic of all would have been uh, um, not just the mem uh, traders with Wall Street bets. Many of you are familiar with that, so I don't have to give that. But we were talking about, um, you know, looking at AMC, for example, and GameStop. That has to be a historic case study for 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 life. But with HGSI, what's really cool is the way this chart, and you can lay this out, and 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 I can run through a scan, and I can take a look at the condition of this market. And there's some several data points that I like. A this little dash line up here on the chart is the sector group. So at Marley in the material sector, I'm looking at what is it doing relative to the sector group of the market? Is it kind of adhering to the trend of the market? Is it underperforming, outperforming? That's nice. But down here with the person's market catcher, the PMC indicator, this 
kind of gives me a better inkling of the condition of the rally. So if you uh, highlight a chart and you say, gee, John's got a PPS buy signal. It's it's this little uh, arrow or box, which has got a B on it, B for a PPS buy signal. You'd run a scan and you'd say, hey, what is the buy signal? It's got, oh, uh, the volume's not great. And all of a sudden, about two, three days later, the volume, the on-balance volume started to break out above the yellow line. The yellow line's a moving average. So when an indicator starts to point higher than a detrending moving average, it shows that there's uh, really a, a hard line in the sand that says, man, this thing has gone from downtrend to uptrend. There's there's no doubt in, in, in your mind, right? So when you look at the relative strength of the market, bright blue suggests that this stock relative to the S&P is outperforming the market. And you'd say, hey, that looks very strong. Market rallies and you're all excited and it looks great and you're buying it and you're buying it. And all of a sudden you get a one day wake up, you get a little sell signal. And then it gives another buy signal and you go, well, how does the relative strength of person's indicator look like? And the first thing you would say is, is that the power of this tool helps to identify the condition of rallies and the condition of breakdowns in the form of divergences. And what a divergence is, and this is key, you should write this down. When a market makes a price structure, makes a higher high, relative to a preceding peak or older highs and the person's market catcher shows lower relative high readings if you notice that the high in ab marley over here back in december was higher than its high a week earlier and certainly higher than it was back in three months earlier in september so prices made a new higher high the relative strength tool made lower consecutive highs it's lower than the highs here in August. It's lower than the high here in November. And the indicator was trying to tell us that while the price was going up relative to the over market, overall market, it's losing its positive relationship or the momentum of the market. So that's one of the things that if you're thinking, hey, I'm going to stay long this market, I don't need to tighten up a stop. That's the opposite of what you should be doing. Relative strength tool, the PMC, when it comes to using this tool is going to be fabulous in helping to identify is the stock outperforming relative to the market but more importantly after a prolonged period of moving higher if it's not showing a defined sense of uh it's within itself of breaking out making newer highs i'm talking the indicator itself there might be questionable concerns on that particular stock now the next point is on what time frame? This is a daily chart. So I'm not saying that Ab Marley is going to go, uh, that this is a false breakout or a weakening high. It was that will last forever. It just means that when this stock rallied up close to 290, it was under a weakening relative strength condition. So you start to look at that tool and say, gee, that's interesting. It's, it is bright blue, but looking at past price action this thing is showing signs of deteriorating weakness that means something's wrong as the stock starts to trend lower you'll notice that the pmc indicator reading is turning darker blue that means it's in a weakening state when it turns bright red that's no bueno and that's my spanish for no good if you're long and it's red, that means the market is lagging relative to the market. And let me tell you something about institutional traders. They don't like to be on the wrong side of the market often. And so if the market is falling and the relative strength is weakening, and you can see where it started to weaken here around Christmas time, right into this structure. So some people might be saying, hey, I want to buy the rally. And if you look down here, you go, I don't know that relative strength until it turns positive is not a, a very strong rally. So therefore, the PMC tool, when we run scans using HGSI software, first thing I like to do is to see is the relative strength in a strengthening condition, bright blue, or is it a weakening condition, which is dark blue? The next phase that you want to see is the price starts to make a low and you start to see the relative strength is not getting weaker. It's actually starting to see some improvement. And it might be difficult to see this 
color change on your computer, but the red bars means it's lagging and the fuchsia means it's improving. So there's improving fuchsia, bright blue outperforming, dark blue weakening, and red lagging. If you're looking to run a scan on a trade, the first thing that I like to do for is uh, number one is I go through a list and I like this, which was all created for us and, and put together fairly easily is I have, if I'm bullish the market, I'm looking for bullish stocks and I'm looking for weekly buys. So every Friday when, when we're, uh, we, we finished updating the software, generally on the weekends when it's calm and I don't have to worry about things and I'm, I'm not listening to news all the time, I'm not worried about what earnings are coming out or looking at my positions. I run through and I go, interesting, I want to look at how many new fresh buy signals are coming up in the market, number one, and what is the condition of the market? It's the relative strength is outperforming. I like that. I like to see an outperformance in the market. What's another interesting aspect about this stock uh, program, or at least with uh, HGSI, if, if I go and I go to industry group, double click on industry group, one of the things that I really like is it tells me, is it the only stock in the group that's uh, showing out performance? And ironically, you could see that there are other names, whether it's Aviant Corporation, and uh, it lists what's really neat is this right here. All the information I need, whether it's e earnings per share, whether it's 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 um, earnings, it's next quarterly estimates, all of the fundamental information is all lined up on this chart too. So I can take a look at this chart and say, gee, is this market look like it has some good momentum? The relative strength is improving because it's getting from red to fuchsia to blue. And was there volume participation? Gee, the on-balance volume is obviously trending higher. It closed greater than its moving average. And so it does show that there's potential for this stock to see greater gains. That's the key. So if I'm looking to buy a stock, the first thing I want to know is if it's in a higher time frame buy. And again, key takeaway, what is the condition of the market? Is it have good volume trend flows? Is it also showing stronger relative strength? Those are the key elements. And what's really nice here is that as with the PPS indicator, it reflects the, and it literally paints the picture uh, on the chart. You could see from way back here, it generated a buy signal. The relative strength didn't even start to outperform, even though it was in a price-based indicator buy signal. Notice that when did it start to really launch and catch a bid in the market? When the relative strength started to improve. So if you can kind of use this as a great tool, a, I, I don't want to say a crutch, but it's a great tool to give extra added confirmation of the condition of the market. Is it outperforming? And that's one of the things that people are looking for. They're looking for that alpha. They're looking for market outperformance I don't want to be in a stock that's going to sit sideways for the next 20 years. So with that said, a stock that has an improvement in relative strength, more importantly, a stock that is sitting here in a buy signal with improved relative strength and there's other stocks in the sector, that's a very powerful identification. So one of the things that I would absolutely avoid doing is to look for buy signals and we're going to change this up real quick. Depending on your time horizon, I have several different uh, plugins that we like. A daily buy signal. And as you can see, if we're looking for end of day buy signals in this environment, a stock that might be looking, and I don't know who Finance of America Corporation is, but uh, for example, it's lagging. I'm looking for a buy signal. Just because it has a daily buy signal, well, that's great. It's just a price based. It's been sitting here languishing over the last, what, six, seven days or so. Look at the relative strength and look at the direction of the volume. This wouldn't even, I, I mean, until I see an improved relative strength and until the volume trend is pointing up, I'm not really interested in, in whatever this stock is, bottom line. So I would say, looking at a stock that if I'm looking at a buy signal, maybe I'll be looking at something that has a strong buy 
in a, a PPS buy, but I want to see the improving PMC is improving, not by one day. And I also want to see if the volume is trending higher. Now, one of the things that I think is capable of this software is to say, hey, filter out, and this would be really fantastic, is to filter out if the relative strength is improving or outperforming and the current uh, time period's volume is greater than, say, the last 10-day average. And that's a great combination of filtering out and, and using a I want to get into a stock that has overall trend of volume, not just a one day wonder in a wild trading range. So if I'm looking for stocks that that have perhaps better performance, here is a, a stock. It's a small little company called North Fork Southern, not to be sarcastic. I apologize for that the sarcasm, but it's a little choo choo train company, uh, rail freight. You know, it's interesting because the rails have been a little bit under uh uh, water lately, whether it's uh, uh, Canadian National or, um, and again, in this case, North Fork Southern. What's interesting about this is you see up at this column, I even use this, how many stocks in that industry group are in buy signals? And what's interesting is that 83% of the rails or that are contained in HGSI's let's call it database, 83% of those stocks are all in daily buy signals. So that means it's not just one stock and, and one stock only in a buy when the group is maybe not doing so well. I like to see if there is a better than one day relative strength improvement. And I'd also like to see if the volume can get back above. So I would put this under a watch list over the next couple of days and say, hey, maybe if the relative strength improves again, and if the volume improves, maybe it's time to get back into the rails. At the very least, I could make a determination. Perhaps this is just a simple trading range, but I have a strong base of price action I can see here. And I can tell that the relative strength is improving. It's not weakening. If the relative strength is weakening on a rally, I'm not quite sure I want to buy the dip. I don't want to buy the dip until I see improved relative strength like this buy signal right there and improved volume trend. And then I can monitor the condition of that trade. As the stock goes up, as you notice, we just talked about a divergence pattern, right? As the stock rallies and makes new highs, you've got to ask yourself, if it's so strong, why is the relative strength significantly weaker than it was in just recent history? I mean, I'm not going back 20 years. I'm only going back maybe 10 weeks, right? I mean, this high here in January, uh, relative to the high back in November, it's a little higher, but the relative strength is a lot weaker. Even the volume looks good, but it's the relative strength that gives probably the better clue that, hey, something's wrong. If it doesn't get some mojo and get some upside momentum in price action with more participation in volume, something is not right. So the relative strength is one of the more powerful tools for a stock trader. And I'm, I'm here to tell you, in, in this year, we have a whole landscape of things changing. First and foremost, we've got George in the house with us, which is fantastic. Uh, so you know something's got George uh, fired up to join us today. So I'm honored to have George Roberts with us today, number one. Number two, it seems that we're starting to, as more and more states loosen the, the, the stranglehold of the pandemic, um, and, and we're starting to see it being classified now as an endemic, rather than a global pandemic, things are going to start to normalize. We all know that there's the big evil word called inflation. We all know that we're probably got the Federal Reserve that's going to now start to go in an interest. We've already telegraphed that interest rates are going higher. It's just a matter of are they going up 100 basis points, which would be one full Fed funds point, 1%. Ooh, 1%. Wow. And the Fed funds rate. Um, what What is the outlook, though, for tightening too too much tightening in in the um in 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 the banking system so the question begs things are starting to change the, the economy and stocks right now it you know are, are going to have to earn their what i call their pe's their price to earning ratios they're not going to have to be free money people won't be trading sitting around home anymore they may have to go back to actual go to work in an office now and so there is going to be a change in a rotation. And, and now that people say, hey, uh, uh, 
money's not as much, it's not going to be as free as it once was. It's going to be a cost of doing business. We're going to be in a, a very, I think, uh, violent period for, or at least a higher state of volatility for a little while. That's an understatement. I'm sure everyone uh, can make that same assumption. So what does that mean? It means being able to filter rather than get frustrated, what was is probably not going to be. In other words, stocks that were up based on uh, pandemic uh, in environment, you know, and I'm not going to say like your docu-signs and, and, and things of that nature or travel. Uh, you know, are people going to travel really as much? Are they really going out to travel as much? What's been priced into the market? What hasn't been priced into the market? So the question that that I think is that needs to be asked is what's one of the better tools that can tell us where the strengths are in the marketplace and where are the weaknesses? What's the selling pressure and what's the the buying pressure? And the PMC indicator, if out of all the tools that we have, person's pivots are fantastic, no doubt about it. The high and low closed OG indicator, fantastic. Um, by the way, if you look at the difference between the person's daily buy, this was for coming into today, showed there were 52 stocks in um, daily buy mode, PPS. This is a company wheels up. You guys are probably familiar with this. It's in the airline sector, uh, which it's, uh, or industry group is airlines. The sector is con consumer discretionary, agreed. If you have enough money that you pay your rent and you wanna get on a, 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 a private, semi-private plane, that's kind of consumer discretionary. But in the airline sector, um, you know, how many how many stocks in that group are in buy signals in daily PPS buy? 88.9% of the airlines are already in buys. So let's let's put that to test. So let's take a look at American Airlines, AAL. Give this a second, circle means it's thinking, it's calculating, bingo. It's been in a daily buy. It was in a daily buy uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12 days ago. And I bet you there's a little function over here that will actually even tell me how many days ago it was in a buy if I've put it in there. So I think there is a function. I just don't really quite use it, right? It's, again, another, um, another function of what HGSI offers. I mean, phenomenal, fantastic. Uh, information, both fundamental as well as other indicators that I personally do not use. I'm not saying they're bad, but for example, I know George might or others might use uh, how many um, stocks are within the upper band or lower band of, of, of Bollinger's, and that's another little function. I do not use Bollinger bands whatsoever, so therefore it's not an indicator that I use. I'm not saying it's bad. I don't use it. I use a few indicators that make sense to me. I, I think that my indicator with the person's pivots, I think the indicator with the PPS and the high closed doji are, are probably the most powerful price-based momentum tools that are available. Um, I want to know if it's support and resistance. I don't need to know about Bollinger Bands, quite frankly. The middle band's a 20-period SMA, simple moving average. So if you wanted to throw a... 20 period simple moving average over a chart, bingo, you've got your uh, middle Bollinger band for the most part. I wanna know what the condition of that stock is relative to the overall market. Is it strengthening? Is it weakening? And that is based on pure percentage of value movement. And that's a metrics not a lot of people use. So for me, it's more about the condition of price when I'm looking for a scan also, it's about the, the, the concentration of how many stocks in that sector are in a simple buy or a sell. So American Airlines, just to, to test the water, uh, we can go JBLU. You could look at SAVE, and you'll find that all of these stocks uh, generally in the airline sector, and that's what it reflects here. 88% of the stocks in the space are going up. 88% of the stocks have already been in a daily buy. And by the way, if you take a look at the last time that JetBlue uh, about two weeks ago generated a buy, the relative strength was bright blue, and we had an uptick in the volume. So this was actually giving you a very strong confidence level.
that we had at, at least a way of going with a, a, an improved technical condition of the market. That's just JetBlue. Um, I'm not going to go with Spirit Airlines save. I'll go with Alaskan Airlines. A lot of people like Alaskan. They've got cash on hand. They pay a dividend, et cetera. Um, and I'm, you know, I know about Alaskan Air, but same story. It almost on the same day as JetBlue generated a daily buy. Bright blue, improving, volume upticking. That's Alaskan Airlines. And then last one I'll just go is United Airlines. So United Airlines, again, same story, different stock. Uh, almost the same day, they all generated a buy at the same time. It, you know, the relative strength was starting to see some improvement here. Uh, it had a two, three day down tick, and all of a sudden the volume started to kick into high gear, and then that sector moved up. So, to run a scan and to find out how many stocks are in that sector, is it a good sector to be in? I think this is one of the other tools that will be very helpful for everyone. All right. Um, by the way, um, and I, I know I talked about George, but we also have, um, by the way, I don't know if many of you guys that are, I don't know how many people in here are actually uh, users of HGSI, but uh, I know George is the man behind the scenes uh, or the man in the front, but it's actually, uh, I don't want to throw George under the bus, but it's actually Matthew Sorrells, who Matt uh, is, is probably... Um, the main man behind the scenes that knows how to put the, the fingers to the keyboard to make things programmed and happy and, and get everything working. So any event that I just wanted to throw that out there. Sorry, George, I don't want to step on your toes, but I want to give Matthew a little bit of heads up there for everyone who are not familiar with them. All right. So when I take a look at a, a, a stock, how, what am I looking for? I'm looking to make money. I'm not looking to lose money and I want to know the condition of the market. If I'm looking for a brand new fresh trade, I want to know is, gee, should I buy Granite Point Mortgage Company? Well, first thing I could tell you, if the relative strength is lagging, you know, it might be an okay trade, but baby, uh, that I want to see, I don't know if I'm going to be sitting here languishing for this stock for the next, like this, uh, for the next two months until I see actual improvement in relative strength and volume trend helping to support that buy, the odds of me, you know, dipping my toe into that trade are slim to none. Now, let me switch cases here and I'm gonna go for at least for buy signals, my high close doji strategy. Now, if you notice comparing an apple to an apple, and if you said, John, gee, your daily buy had 52 stocks. And what about this high close doji? High close doji had something in the neighborhood of over 200. There it is, 200. Four times greater buy signals using a high close doji. Well, that's pretty interesting. And if you said, gee, I'd like to know more about that, then that would be a smart idea. Because the whole thing about the high close doji is it, it can, listen carefully, the high close doji pattern can give a buy signal ahead of the PPS indicator anywhere from one to three time periods. So in other words, it's an earlier warning price signal. It's a one candle pattern. So when I'm looking for a stock that has a high close doji, that's kind of an interesting uh, pattern. Now, obviously you can go, gee, Huntsman Corp, it's uh, outperforming. I just clicked on it because it's uh, basic materials. It looks interesting materials i see if i click on sector look at all of the material stocks that generated buys in yesterday's end of day we had alcoa we had uh whoever metal packaging guy is core mining is gold we know that we have again uh a few uh metals and mining companies Timken steel another material so um you know i wanted to focus in on if it's in a sector I want to focus in on stocks that are showing improved relative strength. Bright blue with good participation in, in, in value. Now, I'm not saying that if you guys use HGSI and you have other favorite indicators, I never, never said get rid of anything else you've used. I said, and I want to make sure I reemphasize that I believe Joe Granville's on balance volume is a powerful tool if used correctly and you understand the, the, 
the nature of how it's constructed. And if you look at the power behind relative strength, and you often will hear a lot of people talk about RSI, relative strength index. Look, relative to this market, the S&Ps are outperforming the Russell or relative to uh, Pepsi, uh, Pepsi relative to Coca-Cola's outperforming. Um, and that's, that is called comparative relative strength analysis. And so other people might refer to it as maybe a pairs trade. You could buy in the same sector group, for example. Another uh, uh, method of trading is comparing the one performance to another. You might have a sector go down like housing, but maybe perhaps housing's a big word iRobot or Wayfair, which provides furniture or something that goes into a house relative to like maybe say Sherwin-Williams, a paint company, two separate industries, but they're all within the same sector group. I guess on a larger scale, it could be considered consumer discretionary, but it's in housing, right? Paint company, Sherwin-Williams, and then Wayfair furniture. Uh, they both kind of go on a house, one you sit on and one you, you you paint on the house or interior or extra. You could look at a ratio spread between those two products. And that would say, hey, one is outperforming relative to the other. And that would be another example of relative strength. But what we're doing here with the PMC is to say, hey, listen, we have condition of the market. If the market is starting to improve and it's starting to catch a bid and it's been in a buy and there's a stronger uptrend in volume, the odds that the stock is going to find some follow through momentum is good. I'm not guaranteeing 100%, but I'm saying is good. When a stock starts to make breakouts to newer highs and the relative strength is not as high, always check to see, hey, this thing's breaking out, it's breaking out to new highs. Is it breaking out with stronger relative strength than the previous peak? If not, this could be a maybe it's a, a, a just a exhaustion top before it's getting ready for a obviously a dump. When the market starts to show a sell signal and the relative strength is falling, I'm telling you that's something that you need to understand. And in this environment that we get through over the next or at least this year in a Fed tightening cycle. It's going to be very interesting. You want to stay away from stocks that give buy signals. Stay away from stocks that give buy signals that are in weakening relative strength condition and no volume. I'm not saying it might not turn around in a couple of days, but the odds that the stock does not have momentum follow through is pretty good. So you want to stick with stocks that have uh, good sector participation and are starting to show signs that the relative strength to the overall market is outperforming. And that's some of the tools and how we use them. And I didn't mean to focus as much time on uh, the PMC, but as a stock picker's market, whether you know this or feel this way or not, I think it is going to, you know, rotation has been an interesting aspect. This can work as far as uh, looking at sector ETFs. If you wanted to trade a sector ETF, we're going to take a quick look here at XLU. If I may be so bold, it's trying to think about it, XLU. So with the utility sector and looking at XLU, um, I would say that as we were starting to move up, just like I was saying, uh, a new higher high, if it's so strong, why is the relative strength weakening? And if it's so strong, why isn't the volume confirming a newer high in the market? So the utility sector, is, is a, again, a space that you're not looking to pick that bottom or buy that until, at the very least, if you are, wait till you see volume participation by a simple observation, the on-balance volume greater than the moving average that we applied, and then look to make sure that PMC is, is um, improving in its fuchsia, if better yet, it's bright blue, and more importantly, get yourself at least a buy signal going. And that would be an interest, at least the, the right approach. Um, lastly, XOP, let's take a look at just the, you know, I, I'm, I'm kind of cherry picking a little bit. Ironically, here's oil and gas exploration. Is the space getting crowded? Everyone knows you got to be long uh, gas. Everyone long knows you got to be long 
uh, because crude oil is up to $95 a barrel or so. But the oil and gas exploration, as it's moving up, the funny thing is the relative strength starting to weaken and the volume is starting on these pullbacks. It's getting a little bit, it, it rallies and it pulls back very quickly. So there's kind of an interesting situation developing that maybe it's slightly overbought in the near term and we have to pay closer attention to that. And for the higher time frame, the next thing you do is change it to a weekly time frame. I don't know if you're interested in this, but in the oil and gas exploration sector, the relative strength, even on a weekly basis over the, the last one, two, three, four, five, six weeks is struggling up against these making, trying to make newer highs. So while the market might seem strong, the overall sector, something underneath longer term or intermediate term is starting to weaken. And I, I think that'll give you a more, instead of saying the wind is blowing from east to west and I think it can't go any higher, then maybe use a tool like this that would say the percentage change comparing this product to the S&Ps is changing. And that's a, a very powerful tool. This is not a price-based tool. It's a percent to change relative tool that I think is something that's going to enhance a lot of traders. I wish we had more time that I could give you a one-on-one -on -one lesson about the power of the person indicators out here. But I can tell you that when I run through my daily um, scans, the first thing I do is I like to compare an apple to an apple. How many new fresh daily sell signals populated on low closed OGs? How many new fresh PPS or daily sell signals populated? And then I like to compare that to, again, buy signals. If we're a day that we're getting more buy signals than sell signals at the end of the day, that's a powerful tool. And, and it would share that me that this is not because the markets are changing on a, a positive basis because any stock can go positive. I want to know, did it have a defined turn of events that have created new fresh PPS buys or high closed OGs? So uh, again, I think HGSI is just a introduce you guys to a few things about the tool and about uh, the product is is it's available and I if anyone has not had exposure to HGSI if I may be so bold we're gonna throw up a and and share with you exactly how to get it or check it out or to find out more about it you can go to our website personsplanet.com Go to Persons Indicators and go right here to HGSI, first on the list from the bottom up. And you can learn all about Persons Pivot Indicators on HGSI. And you can click here if you've never tried this platform before for stock picking capabilities. This is institutional. I want to be honest with you. This is institutional grade quality. Um, there's a lot of platforms out there that offer a lot of different um, scanning functions. But what George put together and what, what HGSI has, and I'm sure with, again, the talent of Matthew behind him, being able to put those fingers on that keyboard and, and program things together, it really is a fabulous program product in, in this day and age. So uh, for those that are interested, you've never tried HGSR, uh, HGSI, excuse me, I would say go here, click here, free trial. Try HGSI. If you're not familiar with HGSI, I don't think if you're a stock trader, you're going to be disappointed. And uh, obviously, we have more trading videos on here, things that you can learn more about, uh, not just the PMC indicator, the high and low closed doji indicator, what it's about, how it works uh, together. My last, I didn't even get a chance to talk about last conditional change indicator, a very powerful tool in itself. And again, the buy and the sell signals, uh, which I think that, to be honest with you, is what the engine is behind price momentum. For everyone that joined me today, I want to say thank you so much. We wanted to keep this. I know your time is extremely valuable. We had earnings out on NVIDIA. We had a lot of things out there. And I know everyone wants to run out and watch CNBC's uh, expose on curling with the Olympics. I know that's important for a lot of folks. I'm just joking. Um, maybe it is. Uh, it's kind of fun, I guess. Um, and uh, with that, I wanted to also thank George for 
uh, this is the first time that George is actually, I've had the privilege of sitting with him and it was also nice to have Matthew uh, come in. And basically I asked them to also come in and make sure that they would uh, maybe point out if I said something incorrect about their software, it is after all their baby. I'm just uh, a, a privilege to have my indicators and, and, and to have them on their program. So I encourage everybody, if you've not tested or taken a test drive, or maybe if you have and you've been out of the markets for a while and you're looking to get back in, um, and you thought valuations last year, like Wayfair going to 500 or Sam Adams going to 1400 was ludicrous. And as things are coming back, remember the pendulum swings both ways. Sometimes things get a little too crazy on the upside. Sometimes things get too crazy on the downside. And as we get some of these valuations back to normal, uh, and as, as the market, the Fed and, and the market gets nervous about overshooting the runway, we're going to have some really, ex I believe, because we are seeing it, some exciting opportunities and big moves in the market. Having a tool like this behind you gives you a phenomenal edge. Thank you all for joining me today. And as always, if anyone had any questions on the presentation today, you can simply email us. Um, our, our, we're, we're very um, accessible here in the market. Uh, you can uh, go to our website. Again, it's personsplanet.com. And if you had said, hey, I got some questions on the presentation. Uh, how do I figure this out? Uh, certainly send us an email. At, at, in, and if you want to be direct, believe it or not, info at personsplanet.com. We'll get you. And then just in the subject line, HGSI question. We'll get right on it. More importantly, I want to wish everyone a great rest of your uh month of February and for 2022. I plan on having more of these. Uh, we do every month, by the way, we do what's called a PUG user group. It stands for Persons User Group. Any in platform that uses my indicator, we do a customer appreciation once a month. We do free educational webinars and we go through exactly what this does and how this works. And those are recorded and we put those and post them on our our website. So we have a, a whole slew of educational videos there to help uh, investors make the most of their trading platforms. I encourage you to also, uh, the next one that we have, uh, we also incorporate HGSI because I actually use it on a weekly basis in our, in our uh, analysis uh, format. So I do uh, bring up HGSI. Some of you have seen me use it in the live trading room. We go through and do exactly what I was sharing with you today. How many buys did we have? How many sells? What sectors are popular? And what's the strength or condition of that market? With that said, thank you all and each and every one for your time. George, again, and Matthew, thank you for attending today. And again, have a great rest of your uh, February. Don't forget Monday. President's Day. So rest up. It's going to be quite an exciting March. That's for sure. Thanks, everybody. I'll see you uh, probably at the next pug meeting. Have a great evening. That concludes our time together now.